some of you may know who he is. I, I didn't know who he was until we got a call to the office saying there was going to be these award ceremonies and, you know, probably like a few others in the room I can do with an awards, another award ceremony like a hole in the head. But then they said, well, it's going to be not for profit, it's going to be a social business. And then it kind of got my attention. <clears throat> and then when I was finding out some of Josh's background, and I was saying, how, how did you hear about Eunice? How did you hear about this great man? He said, oh, just, I was reading about him, and then I thought it's totally inspiring. And I just took myself and my girlfriend, and we just flew to Bangladesh. So that's the sort of spirit that <laughs> built our great country. There's not enough of that spirit, and we need to rekindle that spirit. So a round of applause for Josh and what he's did for this so far. So, Professor Eunice, welcome back to Scotland. Um, I first met Professor Eunice in New York in um, 2005. Um, I got the introduction when I was um, educating myself on the great, um, in a different way of looking at the world. And um, the first thing that struck me was a brilliant smile, such a warm welcome, and a, a humility that has struck me and stuck with me. Um, the humility of the man, and when he speaks tonight, you just think, you know, this is something which we can all learn a great deal from. And um, we, did, we decided, um, a bit easier for us to get to Bangladesh, and maybe Josh, but we were in India at the time um, on business, and we decided to go to Bangladesh. And um, as usual in any of our trips, the schedule was completely blown out of the water. And we didn't arrive in Dhaka till about um, four o'clock in the morning. And when we arrived at the airport, the usual thing, there was maybe seven or eight of us, Ewan was with us, and we arrived at the airport and the usual passport control and purpose of your business. And I was very proud to say, this was 2007, I was very proud to say, oh, I'm, I'm here to see Mohammed Yunus. And the guy kind of looked at me I went, okay, wait there. So then somebody else comes along. Why are you here? So I, I'm, I'm here to see Muhammad Yunus. Oh, right, wait there. And each time, the guy who came had a bigger hat and more stripes and was looking at us with a bit more. So after an hour of this, I'm saying, come on, it's now five o'clock in the morning. Is there a problem? Oh, well. So then nobody, nobody said a word, right, you can go now. So off we went and we went to see... Um, Eunice the next morning and I said I had a funny thing at the airport he says look before you start I want to tell you something I decided yesterday that I'm going to run for president of Bangladesh <laughs> so I'm sure the immigration thought we were some white mercenaries come to back up this coup d'etat in um, Bangladesh <laughs> so you nearly got me locked up um, but as I was saying there you know Muhammad Yunus, for me, is one of the greatest entrepreneurs that I've ever met. Because simply, entrepreneurs are great at overcoming challenges and overcoming barriers. And when he was teaching in Chittagong University and espousing great economic theory, but seeing his fellow countrymen die of malnutrition at the side of the road, he decided to do something about it. But the barriers to do something about that in Bangladesh were huge. It was mainly the women. The women were mainly illiterate. They didn't have actually any legal authority and they couldn't do much without their husband's um, blessing, I suppose. But he overcame all of that. So wh which other banker, which other banker in the room this evening would actually say so you want to borrow money, so you can't read a contract, you've got no collateral, and um, I don't know how I'm ever going to get paid back. But that was the challenge that he faced, and he just overcame it, and overcame it in a huge way. And Grameen Bank, 8 million lenders, 97% of them women, and it's got a repayment rate of 98%, better than any Western bank has ever had. And that's the genius of the man. And then his telephone ladies and Dan Owen, I'm sure you're going to tell us a bit about it. 
But I think there is a momentum coming. There is a momentum coming about social business and about what Professor Eunice is going to talk about. Because what we've got has um, benefited very few of us to the detriment of very many others. And when you hear Eunice speak about this, hopefully you'll get on the bandwagon. Because I really do believe the stuff that Pamela's doing, um, bringing Grameen to Scotland, what many others are doing, Scotland can lead in the Western world in this. And why shouldn't we lead? We've led before, so why can't we lead again? So I'm very proud to know him, very proud to support him in our own small way. And I'm very proud to say he's a great friend of Scotland. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Eunice. Thank you, Tom. And thank you, everybody. Well, I'm very delighted that uh, I get this chance to uh, talk about our work. But uh, watching the video, I thought uh, all the lecture is done. <laughs> what else to add? <laughs> I'll say a few words about the work that we do. First, Tom, uh, I met in 2005 in the Clinton Global Initiative. That's where we got tickets. I didn't know anything about him, and then he introduced himself and talked a lot and wanted to know more about what we do. And that was the beginning, and he became a very strong supporter that uh, we were behind you and want to see what we can do. And suddenly he shows up in Bangladesh with uh, several of his uh, very close friends and uh, <clears throat> want to see what else they can do for Grameen and everything that we are doing. Uh, that's the kind of person uh, Tom was, and uh, kind of uh, with a strong uh, feeling for the work that we have done. And without ever knowing who this guy is from Bangladesh, he flies in uh, all his uh, uh, top friends with him. And I'm very grateful to you, Tom, for, for the support you have shown. And uh, Josh was visiting. I, I didn't know that uh, you knew him before. <laughs> You didn't. <laughs> he shows up. Like we received lots of young people who want to understand Grameen and what we are doing, and he showed up. And he uh, wants to do a lot of things. And I didn't pay much attention to him because there are so many young people come, and uh, I um, explained to them as much as I could what uh, with the purpose. And he wants to do big things, but I didn't realize uh, Josh will come up with such a big, real big things. In the meantime, it's, uh, all the events that have already taken place. And I congratulate you, uh, Tom, for carrying out what you promised that you'll do. But I didn't know that you'll do it at that scale. But uh, that is something uh, very surprising and very pleasing to see a young man taking the lead on that. The work uh, that I'll be talking about is uh, something familiar to many people, the microcredit part of it. Uh, we, we build it up uh, as a small thing, but it's grew into a big bank. And ha I had no idea that uh, I'll get involved with a banking business. And when some people usually introduce me uh, as a banker to the poor, um, then I said, um, the banker, do I feel as a banker? Because is this what I wanted to be, a banker? But th that's not what I did thought I would be. But banker to the poor, maybe that uh, describes it a little better than I'm banker to the poor. Uh, but it, again, it's an accidental thing, which is doing something very tiny little thing in one village, and then growing it into a large institution. And with a very special kind of features of that bank. It's a bank which lends money to extremely poor people, particularly poor women. And it grew uh, over years, lending money. But the bank is owned by those poor women. That's a very special feature of them. Uh, many people uh, do not notice that part, the ownership part of it. Uh, and uh, we, we lend out over one and a half billion dollars every year. 